Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo to Bolt fam, it's the director Chargers fans. Breaking news, the Los Angeles Chargers have just signed tight end Hayden Hurst and restructured Joey Bosa. Two pretty huge and significant pieces of news dropped on our heads as Chargers fans today that both give us another weapon for Justin Herbert as well as some money to spend in the offseason. And boy, howdy, do I really hope Joey Bosa is sticking around for the long haul, man. This would make me very good. You guys know I'm a big Joey Bosa guy. Not a lot of love out there for Joey Bosa right now, man. But let me tell you, Jim Harbaugh will get this guy right. I'm fully going to admit that Bosa's maybe had a little bit of ego problems. Past couple of years with the long leash in the Staley era. But I don't know if Jim Harbaugh is going to let that fly, man. So a couple of big pieces of news to cover today. Uh, going to see what we got in this new guy, Hayden Hurst. As well as take a look at the books. See what we're looking at in terms of money and free agents for the Chargers. Now that some significant cap has been relieved over the past couple of days with the Mike Williams release, the Mac and Bosa restructure, and then some. Before we do kick off, guys, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. It's a great way to have a lot of fun and really help support this channel. Thank you guys so much in advance. Newcomers, definitely take advantage of this special on screen. Before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, small amount of time, you guys take to the like, sub, bell notification notification helps me out a lot let's get into it lights camera action Breaking news, the Los Angeles Chargers have just signed tight end Hayden Hurst and restructured the contract of Joey Bosa. You know, I actually kind of want to start with this one, man. I know a lot of people uh, curious as to what was going to happen with Joey Bosa. Lots of speculation, not just with Chargers fans, but around the league that Joey Bosa was going to get traded. And I think a lot of it had to do with Joey Bosa's injury history yes some money is a big thing but the availability <clears throat> is something that a lot of chargers fans have had a hard time seeing past and i get it that's a very legitimate reason to want to move on from a big contract like joey bosa which was eating a lot of cap in a season that we really needed it however joey bosa when he is healthy really is one of the best pass rushers in the entirety of the NFL. And keeping this group of pass rushers together almost feels like something that's necessary in the AFC West. Not very many things can affect a Patrick Mahomes and the way he plays football, but a premium pass rush really gives you one of your best chances. That doesn't mean to say that the Chargers couldn't move on from one or both of, the guys, both of these guys still. However, it gives the Chargers a lot of flexibility in how they want to do it or if they want to do it at all okay so this is great news i think i'm gonna take the first approach in saying if you're a joey bosa fan maybe believer <laughs> like me this is this really is great news right we're gonna get another shot at seeing the bosa and mac combo which has been very inconsistent the last couple of seasons in terms of health i really want to see what this duo looks like man we're going into a couple of years now uh hoping to see that combo maybe this just could be it okay and on top of that I feel like a restructure usually makes it very difficult to move a player, okay? So if you're looking for Joey Bosa to be restructured and stay with the team, this is pretty good news in that direction. Again, it's not a guarantee. We're going to talk about that here in just a second, that the Chargers still don't move on from him. But when you've got two premium pass rushers like Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, it really frees up what you can do in the draft and in future seasons, especially with Joey Bosa, who's not on a uh, contract year. He's got a couple more years with the bolts this one makes more sense to keep with the chargers but could also bring more incentives for a trade partner if they were willing to pay up in inquiring joey bosa because yes uh, this is gonna raise the price on him right now i'm gonna tell you that right now no matter what happens because of this move if any team were to go and buy joey bosa via trade it would definitely cost a lot more than it did 
yesterday. Okay, and it's something that I was kind of hoping Joe Hortiz would add to his arsenal of weapons here. Very good move, guys. And we're going to explain a little bit more about that in just a second. But one of the biggest questions I've been getting asked since this news dropped, a lot of congratulations, pat on the back for direct, like, hey, we're going to keep your guy another season. Thank you, Bolt fam. I know a lot of you guys do feel the same way. But the biggest question I'm getting asked, what's the money look like? Yeah, well, all of a sudden, we got two restructures. Guys that we've already restructured before, are we just kicking the can further down the road? What do we have to work with this season? Let's take a look. All right, so we don't have any official numbers on either of these moves yet. Okay, Hayden Hurst, Joey Boso, even Khalil Mack, I think at this point, we don't know what the official numbers look like. However, our buddy at Twitter, Mr. Daniel Popper, the GOAT, came in clutch with another one of these spreadsheets that helps us kind of navigate and predict what the budget this season could look like. Let me go ahead and give you guys those final numbers there on the bottom right-hand side. Take a look at all that green, man. The Chargers, who started, what, 40-plus million dollars over the cap this season, now have $20 million in cap space. The two numbers adjusted at the bottom there, effective cap space and adjusted effective cap space, kind of put into account what it would cost to sign our draft picks, as well as an in-season budget of $8 million if the Chargers choose to do so. Either way, this adds a tremendous amount of flexibility for the Chargers going into the second half, I'm going to say, of this free agency period, as well as the draft. This dude, honestly, guys, I, I said this on Twitter yesterday. I'm going to say it again, okay? I think the Chargers are off to a very solid start in free agency. Yes, the splashes haven't been as big in terms of acquisitions. Gus Bus is very exciting for me. Will Disley's a solid move, but we're not going to see, I don't think, those J.C. Jackson, you know, huge moves, which ultimately might be a good thing <laughs> uh, this season because of the cap. Now that we're looking at $20 million in cap space, though, with the availability of these other free agents that, let's be honest, the price every day is going down on that they're not signed, it makes me feel like Joe Hortiz's wider scope vision is a very good one. And I like it a lot. And the biggest thing I liked about these moves is the fact that we didn't give away Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack. Yes, nothing much we could do about uh, Mike Williams. He was injured. The, the price was way too high. There's even a chance that we bring him back. But for those teams that were waiting for the Chargers to cut bait on Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, I'm sorry to say, nothing in life is free. Okay, and Joe Hortiz wasn't going to let that happen, and I tremendously respect that, dude. Teams waiting for Bosa or Mack to be free are all going to be disappointed. I'm talking about, yes, the Saints, but I think especially the Falcons, the Lions. I know there was talk about the Los Angeles Rams. Lots of teams were hoping to say, hey, man, we don't want to touch any of the contract. You guys pay for everything. We just want the reward of the player. That's not going to be the case anymore. Now that the Chargers have restructured Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, the only way you're getting your paws on these uh, players is to pony up the draft picks, baby. And a lot of you guys will still say, well, director, what are we still talking? You know, Joey Bosa, maybe a third, fourth round pick. Now I'm thinking like second round pick, man. Second, third round pick is where I'm at with Khalil Mack. Joey Bosa, I'm thinking second, first round pick. You guys are going to think I'm crazy. First round pick is more so if we wait until after the draft. People miss out on edge players. They're disappointed. The only route is trade. You're trading a next year's first anyway. I think Bosa could still pull a first. If it's before the draft, however, I think a second, third round pick is absolutely in play here now, as of right now. And a big reason why is because, one, Joey Bosa is not on a contract season. You're getting Bosa for a couple of years. Reason number two is that the Chargers, with this restructure, unless Bosa's a, taking a pay cut, the most likely thing that's going to happen over the next couple of days is that we're going to see what's called void years added to Joey Bosa's contract. And this basically means that the Chargers are going to put in two null or fake years uh, in 2025 and 2026, just as an, as an example, okay, that carry a little bit of cap with him. Almost think about it as like dead cap, right, carried by Joey Bosa after his contract has expired. That's money that we got to pay to Bosa even though he's not on the team. The big benefit of that, however, is that you don't have to pay the lump sum of 30 plus million dollars in one year. You can spread it across four or five years, whatever, to make that cap a little bit more manageable on a year to year basis. The Chargers, however, are going to have to pay a big sum of that no matter what, no matter how many void years, et cetera, et cetera, are added. And that's going to add a lot of incentive for a team that wants to trade for Joey Bosa. They just got a discount. Yeah. 
And if Joey Bosa, who I think is due a bonus this weekend, uh, ends up reaching that point before a trade, the price via picks are going to go even higher because the Bolts will have paid even more money on Joey Bosa's contract. Now, there's a little bit of give here, right? The new team that would inquire a Joey Bosa would be getting him at a discount via money, right? The Chargers will have paid the money to Joey Bosa to play on another team. If there were to try and trade from a little bit sooner, however, maybe you can say a third round pick's a little bit more fair because the new team is going to have to pay uh, pay up a little bit more money for Joey Bosa. Either way, I love Joe Horty's strategy here, man. For teams that wanted to be lazy and wait, guess what, guys? The price just went up. And this also really keeps another option in our back pocket that we didn't really have before in keeping Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack for the 2024 season, which is definitely not a bad end result if you weren't able to trade either or both. So I'm I'm excited, man. I kind of me personally, like in my heart of hearts, I hope that Bosa and Max stay and we get to watch them play together this season. If you're asking my brain, like director, separate you know heart from thought. I'm gonna say I, I my brain tells me that this is a strategy to move one of them. Okay, now you got time to you got more leverage. We'll have to wait and see what Hortiz decides to do in the end game. And in the end, it might be price determined, right? Maybe the Chargers say, hey, man, we're going to keep him unless this price is met. That gives us a lot of power, which I very much so appreciate. This is a doggy dog world, man. The NFL, it's tough, right? It is tough to exist out here. Hortiz's job, that's a tough job, man. That's a, that's a man's job right there because you're going to have to play a little bit of poker out here. And sometimes it's easy to fold. Sometimes it's easy to get intimidated. Right, but we didn't buy the buff, the by the bluff. Joe Hortiz looked him square in the in the face and said, "Nah, man, <laughs> we ain't giving nothing away for free. If you want Bosa, if you want Mac, you're gonna have to pay up." And I, I really, really like that uh, coming out of the front office for the Chargers. Okay, so the long term strategy, kind of like what we mentioned before, this is what could still be the strategy that results in a trade. One more time, step one, restructure both of these guys, spread their money uh, across a few void years. I think both, both of these players are going to end up having that happen. Step two, you hold Bosa and Mac, and this is one that I didn't mention, until a majority of desirable free agents are signed at the edge position. I think that's a really good move here as well. Sure, you're going to have to pay up the bonus for Joey Bosa, but when the 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 landscape has dried up and the dust has settled and there's really no available free agent edge players, and maybe you know, you're know you not projected to get a good one in the draft, that is where, once again, the price goes up for one or both of these players. I think that would not be a bad idea right there, too. And then step three, trade one or both, depending on what you want to do, for a premium price. Again, the price for Bosa and Mac yesterday versus today, it, it went up. It went up thanks to Joe Hortiz. All right? And that's what I very much so appreciate about that. In the end, you can kind of step back and say, this man bought some draft picks today. If we were to trade. If we were to trade. Right? We could have traded yesterday for a fourth, fifth, whatever, basically just shoving that money off our books and onto another team. But instead, yes, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but draft picks are very, very valuable, especially for a new GM and coach. And Hortiz found a way, you know, we'll wiggle between the lines and either keep the star players or get more draft picks uh, uh, in a trade, a potential trade there. So I like that quite a bit, man. Let's go ahead and move on to the second part of news here. Maybe not as complex, but one I think could be very exciting. The Chargers have officially signed uh, Hayden Hurst, tight end out of Carolina. This man's been sort of a journeyman in the NFL, playing for several different teams after, I think, being drafted in the first round by the Atlanta Falcons, if I'm not mistaken. Was it that long ago? I don't remember, guys. Excuse me. He was a first-round pick. It's been a, quite a while since then. He's been on quite a few teams since then. But this is not a bad option for the Chargers to give themselves, once again, some more flexibility. I think they're using free agency very wisely right now. You, as the Chargers in the past, felt a little bit cornered into going uh, uh, draft for need, right? Oh, my God, we need a receiver. Oh, my God, we need a corner. Oh, my God, we need a defensive lineman, offensive lineman. Boom, there goes our first round pick, predetermined. Nowadays, it feels like under the Hortiz banner and the Jim Harbaugh banner, let's get a guy. Let's just get a guy, right? Let's get a guy that can go out there. If Hayden Hurst is tight end one this season, so be it. I think he'll be, I think he'll be just fine. It'll be pretty good. I probably still would have preferred Gerald Everett, but it sounds like the price is going to be much cheaper for a Hurst, which sort of fits our books a little bit better. But this is a guy. He really is. This doesn't lock us into, let's say, if the Chargers at pick number five feel like, oh my God, the need at tight end is so huge. We got to go Brock Bowers, as awesome as that would be. 
and as much of an endorsement you would get from me to pick up Brock Bowers, it doesn't corner you into making that decision anymore. Now the Chargers, let's say, you know what? We've done our homework. Malik Neighbors is the guy. And by the way, guys, it feels like Malik Neighbors season all of a sudden. If Malik Neighbors is the guy, you take him. You don't even look back. You're good at tight end, right? Let's say in the second round even. Uh, Jatavian Sanders is out there. You're not cornered at tight end anymore. You don't need to pick one up. It feels like with this move, you have the flexibility to do whatever you want in the draft when it comes to this position. Now, does that mean we're not going to draft one? I still think we should. I think the Chargers, at very minimum, should hold four on the roster, considering how important that position is going to be, uh, as well as in terms of getting more guys that are a bit better in run blocking. However, if you end up whiffing or if you end up needing to wait a season for a little bit you know, uh, more premium of a draft uh, uh, in terms of that position at tight end, because this, this position group in, in this season's draft isn't too strong, then you can do that. That's kind of what a Hayden Hurst does for your team. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what does this guy do? Is he good? Is he bad? I'm going to just say he's good. He's, he's fine. I'll, I'll say that. That's a good word to, to describe Hayden Hurst. He's fine. He's fine. He's, he's going to be a fine tight end. Kind of the way I described Gerald Everett when we first signed him. He's fine. He's fine, right? A lot of us looking for that next Hunter Henry, that next Antonio Gates. It's not going to be this guy at all, okay? It may, might, may not even be this season unless we get Brock Bowers. But Hayden Hurst buys us some time to continue uh, fixing the position in the future, if need be, if we don't get a guy this season. I still think Theo Johnson's on the table, Davian Sanders, Stover. There's some good guys in this draft, but there's so much fewer of them this year as, con as compared to last season. Hayden Hurst offers you a little bit of bumper room here, okay? So what are we getting in this guy? Is he good? The biggest question I get asked every time I make a signing on Twitter. Uh, again, he's fine. The strengths of a Hayden Hurst that I will point out that I do enjoy, that I think Chargers fans, especially uh, uh, Justin Herbert is going to enjoy. This dude's a pretty decent, I would almost say good, excellent pass catcher, right? He's a good receiver. I like him. A possession guy, good hands, decent route runner. Again, not going to jump off the page in any given, you know, trait or, or stat, but he's, he's good. Like, he really is good. But one thing that he does excel at, which is interesting, which we'll have to look a little bit deeper into depending on his situation last year with the Carolina Panthers, um, is that he's a very decent pass blocker. Okay, he's a very decent pass block. I would say above average pass blocker in the NFL for the tight end position. And this does help kind of round out a group of, of talented tight ends that kind of hold different strengths and weaknesses, right? You got Donald Parham, who's going to be your, your vertical guy, your your big six foot, what is it, eight target in the, in the, uh, in the red zone. Uh, you've got Will Disley now, who's going to be your run blocking tight end, who's one of the best run blocking tight ends in the NFL. That's a great weapon to have on your roster. And now you got uh, Hayden Hurst, who's an excellent pass blocking tight end that can help Justin Herbert out in those particular situations. It feels pretty well rounded to me. However, I do have to point out one thing. Okay. And it's one thing that Maybe not everybody's going to be super stoked to hear about, but it's, I do have to point out, it's one of the first things I noticed about him when I was looking up some of his grades on PFF. As good as he, as good as he is as a receiver and a, and a pass blocker, he is extremely bad in run blocking. I'm talking extremely bad. Some of you might say, well, you know, not a big deal. He's going to be a receiving guy. He's going to be maybe blocking in, in more, you know, passing situations. Yes and no. Um, Every player on offense is going to be asked to block. <laughs> I'll say that. In the Harbaugh slash Roman offense, receivers, vertical tight ends, running backs, everybody's going to be asked to block in this offense because it's going to be predominantly what a, a, a run balance offense, I would have to imagine. And you're going to be asking these guys in any situation, especially when you're audibling at the line, to block at any given time. Unfortunately, Hayden Hurst rated the very, very bottom for PFF, dead last in the league when it comes to blocking. And just to kind of give you guys some perspective on this, uh, Trey McKitty, who we cut, who we were hoping to be our blocking tight end a couple years ago, um, he, he grades well above a Hayden Hurst in this situation. Even Donald Parham, uh, who's on the roster now as well, just very, very... And there's Stone Smart right there. Worse than Stone Smart, worse than Kyle Pitts. It is something that is a bit concerning. And again, maybe not as big of an issue because he's not going to be our primary blocking tight end. That's what we have Will Disley for. However, you would like to see every tight end on your roster be at least okay at run blocking, even below average. This is the worst in the NFL right now. And again, the situation could be different. Somebody pointed out to me that, you know, the Carolina Panthers... 
in terms of their, you know, offense could have been, you know, throwing him in there at left tackle pretty much all the time. There's pass blocking grades, by the way. Definitely not too bad. Could have been throwing him in that situation too often. Um, but it's kind of sporadic, right? If we can get up into the 57.4, 51.3 even, totally fine with it. We got to get better than this 28.3 than we saw last season. If we can find a happy medium between, you know, the pass blocking and the run blocking, I think we'll be just fine. So, again... Maybe we're making something out of nothing, but it's something I have to point out because the only thing that kind of, you know, stood out as a strange uh, trait to me, at least, was the fact that he looks like a really poor run blocker. That, again, maybe is not the case. Maybe Harbaugh and company knows something we don't, but uh, hopefully it's something that he can figure out before kickoff because we need a little bit from him in terms of run blocking. Every every tight end needs to contribute a little bit in the run blocking uh, part of things, all right? Uh, last thing to kind of note on this signing... Again, I actually kind of already went over this. I, Disley and Parham help complement him, and it rounds out our tight end room. Okay, you got Parham, the big target. You got Disley, the run blocker, and now Hurst, the pass blocker slash receiver. It feels pretty rounded out. Okay, and with that, I wanted to tell you guys, barring a last second shocker, I really, really do believe in my heart of hearts that the Chargers will be selecting Malik Neighbors at pick number five, okay? I'm not going to throw out the possibility of Joe Walt or a tackle. Even a trade down seems pretty likely to me. But the Chargers are sticking and picking at five. It really feels like it's going to be Malik Neighbors. The last couple of moves that we've made kind of help move the needle in that direction. Two tight ends pushes Brock Bowers a little bit further down. Bowers didn't, you know, perform at his pro day, which pushes him down a little bit more even. Um, the Chargers wide receiver room right now doesn't look too good if I'm being outside of Keenan Allen, Quinton Johnston, Donald Parham, Darius Davis. That's it, right? It it just really feels like the neighbors narrative got a big boost today. If you're a neighbors fan, if you want if neighbors at five season guys out there, you should be very excited about the Hayden Hurst signing. It, even though it doesn't seem like it on the surface, like what does it have to do with anything? It, it pushes Brow Bowers down a little bit, and that lowers the chances of trading down because that's kind of the guy that I would want anyway if we did trade down. But it also heightens the fact that wide receiver at five makes a whole lot more sense. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. If you enjoyed what you saw here, hit us up the like and sub on your way out. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up, stay frosty. And let's get busy with a Malik Neighbors offense out here. Greg Roman, I'm excited to see what you're cooking up.